The average shelf life of a new toy is about one year. Quite a challenge when you consider the enormous number of toys on the market. That's why the folks at Wild Planet, based in San Francisco, have decided to market much more than just toys. What they sell is positive play experiences. We sell great products for kids. Some of them are toys, some of them may not look like toys, but in all cases we make sure that those products enhance um, the kids' imagination, prompt them to be interactive, take them outdoors. When the company was founded in 1993, Daniel Grossman had a growing need to create more imaginative toys for kids that parents could support and that kids would also find cool. Their products are intended to make you think. Take this safe cracker game, which was part of their successful spy gear line, an adventurous brain teaser. Or these explorer gloves, which featured gadgets retrofitted for fun in the outdoors. Wild Planet's Aqua Pets come ready to form a relationship with you. So how does Wild Planet develop their products? Ideas come from many sources, designers, engineers, the marketing team, and many straight from the minds of kids. We do research continually all the time. We really, one of our missions of the company is to champion kids, and to do that we really value our closeness to kids. We really wanna be um, in touch with kids all the time. And they are in touch. Wild Planet talks to about 5,000 kids a year, but not through your traditional focus group. The company feels that in order to really get a pulse on children's true thoughts, you have to keep it real. Who wants to get dunked? I do! That's why they do what they call ethnographic research, which is essentially watching kids in their natural play environments. Throughout the years, we found that uh, research becomes more authentic the closer to a real environment that we're in. So in other words, kids don't typically play in focus group facilities. And so even though it takes a little bit more time and effort, we like to meet kids in their homes. We arrange play groups where four or five of a child's friends will come over and we show them new toy ideas and get their feedback. They also hold innovative shop-along studies where they give kids $30 and then trail them at the mall to see how they spend the money. It's critical to understand how consumers interact with the products that you give them. It, in many cases, especially with kids, they'll do something that's completely unexpected. So it's really important to, to watch for what they do with it when they have it. So what influences kids to buy? Peer pressure does come into play a bit when it comes to purchasing toys, but more than peer pressure, I think there's a phenomenon that we see that's a sort of schoolyard buzz. So every kid wants to be the first on their block to get the new latest and greatest toy. So in the case of an innovative toy, we know that if it gets into the hands of a sort of a trendsetter uh, kid, that that definitely creates a, a certain buzz. That can be a boost to a toy, especially with so much competition. Finding the right mix of interactivity and imagination can be tricky. Throw in the differences between how girls like to play and what toys boys are into, and you've got yourself a complicated marketing equation. So how does Wild Planet deal with marketing products to different genders? Since girls and boys buy in very different ways, they conduct exploratory testing a method they used on their spy camera product. We found this was a really popular item with boys. Girls, when we showed it to them, said, I don't want it to look so obvious. Um, so whereas boys were perfectly happy to d and excited about ex displaying their gadgetry, um, girls wanted something a little more covert. Of course, not all toys are for both boys and girls. When the company launched its room gear line, it was originally intended for both sexes. However, after the company conducted usability testing, that is, after the product hit the market, they learned that the room gear line products for boys were not appropriate. That's when they changed the room gear line to female products only and renamed it Girls Living in Style, or GLS. The GLS line of products came to be after Wild Planet discovered that girls were much more interested in redecorating and accessorizing than playing with toys. It's all part of a growing trend of kids getting older, younger. The company's research also showed that girls are abandoning the toy store much sooner than boys. 
girls really spend more time in their rooms than boys do and seem to care more about the de decor of their rooms. And for that reason, we decided instead of going down the middle line to try to appeal, appeal to both boys and girls, that we would just go um, directly, speak directly to girls. And it appears girls are listening. It's very important for me to like have my room decorated how I like it. So when my friends come over, they go, oh, wow, I, I really like that. What is it? Where, where'd you get it? And that's what I like about my room. At Wild Planet, kids' opinions count. That's why the company has what they call a toy opinion panel. Now you have a really important job. So just like you're a judge at the, at the Olympics, I want you to give a score to the Aqua Pets. So you're going to give a score from 1 to 10. And um, that's it for now. I really appreciate it. You guys gave me a lot of great feedback. Our toy opinion panel, or TOP for short, is our national research program. And uh, our TOP database has literally thousands of families that we can call upon anytime we need uh, opinions on some toys. So generally the way it works is either through sur surveys or in-home groups, kids have a chance to test out the newest uh, toy ideas and give us their feedback. But their involvement with children doesn't end there. Perhaps the most exciting and innovative program at Wild Planet is the Kid Inventor Challenge, where kids get to enter their ideas for cool toys. The Kid Inventor Challenge is an annual contest where thousands of kids have the opportunity to submit their toy ideas to us. So all they need to do is brainstorm the idea, uh, draw it, label it, and they can even give us a little uh, marketing sheet on it if they want to. They send it in and we review them and we select the very best toys to then be manufactured. These Explorer gloves are one example of a kid's idea that came to market. Kids are great inventors. Um, because I think they're, they're great brainstormers. They're not fettered by a lot of the constraints that adults have about why this isn't a great idea, or I haven't fully thought it through, or maybe you're not going to like it. And there are more advantages. A lot of kids write to us and say that because of the Kid Inventor Challenge that they know that they want to be a toy inventor now as their profession. And I know kids' interests um, definitely change as they grow, but I know that we've definitely sparked a lot of imagination in the process. Imagination and that all-important buzz, which can travel all the way to the checkout line. But Wild Planet is not just listening to kids. They also care deeply about what parents think. In addition to doing research with kids, we also do research with parents. And they're, both because they're the purchasers and because they can share with you some of the nuance, because motivation is, is a lot about nuance. We can learn from them and do learn from them in primary research about what's so important to them. So for example, if I say that spy gear is appealing to parents because they both know that kids will find it cool and developmentally to explore and sleuth is a good thing, that's a motivation that we can get a hold of. Getting a hold of kids' motivations is key in today's environment, and it's also crucial to remember that kids 25 years ago are nothing like kids today. Kids have changed a lot. You know, I think that's the biggest lesson that I have to remind myself all the time is that you can't just take what you thought as a kid as true today. Kids now, as compared to 25 years ago, are a lot more savvy and sophisticated. Um, they live in a world where they uh, have always known the internet. They know and are very comfortable with being videotaped and having their opinions asked of them. And so I think they have a certain sophistication that we haven't seen in generations before. But at the end of the day, I still think kids are kids are kids and they love to play with great toys. For the Pearson Video Library, I'm Pat Laurie.